December 27th, 2021. It's a Watt for Pedro show. Watt for Pedro show. Happy Monday. Started off with impressions. John Cotrain. Live on French TV. Whoa. A lot of clicking over there. Uh, John Cotrain. Live on French TV. O R T F July 26, 1965. And then Grouper with Ode to the Blue. And you could probably tell I'm not man alone because of those other sounds. Estonian software. Engineers with their Skype invention has made it possible for me to have Liz Harris. Welcome aboard, Liz. Hi. And we got to give big credit to Brother Bill Nace for the connect. True? Yeah. Yeah. Now, your earliest music recollection, please. Oh, uh, listening to my dad playing records and playing piano. Oh, so... You- you grew up in a house with uh, musicians. Kind of, yeah. My dad was very private about it. Uh, but he always played for himself and ended up going back to school in his early 40s for a composition degree. Um, I don't think he plays anymore. I don't really know. I think he's, he's still pretty private about it. But he was always playing classical records and early music Um He's also really into, like, European folk music, um, and then I would hear him practicing almost every morning. That was how I would wake up. But he never did gigs. He didn't play for other people. You know, John Coltrane's pop was like that. He only, yeah. Oh, only played in, yeah. yeah, he only played in his bedroom a uh, violin for yeah. himself. He was a tailor during the daytime. Yeah. I think, and sometimes even we didn't get to hear it. He had it. He had a Yamaha keyboard, and he would play in the headphones. I think he was very self-conscious, even though I know from the times I did hear him that he was super good. Like he was, he could play things like Rachmaninoff and you know complicated pieces. But, uh, but I think he was. I think he was really hard on himself. Maybe I'm not sure. I'm guessing. Well, I'm but. curious. Did you ever jump on his instruments? Um. Well, piano. I I did take lessons in piano for a very short time. How was the experience? Uh, I've had all kinds of reactions from my guests with that. Yeah, experience. you know, he definitely was pushing it, but he didn't force me to keep doing it when I told him like three months later that I didn't want to anymore. I was really stubborn about, um, in all ways, not just music. I've, I've, I probably still am like stubborn about learning the way someone else knows. You know, as soon as I see a little bit into a world, I want to figure out my own way to do it and. That's what I felt about music. But I was really lucky. I had a piano teacher who, from the get-go, did have me, I think from the second time we met, he had me writing my own pieces. Oh, like wow. Like, he gave me That's those great. assignments and would say, you know, bring a composition that you made next time you come. So even though I didn't stick with it long, it gave me a really good, like, foundation point, I think. Yeah, because it seems the teacher is usually the problem, if there is a problem, or the good yeah, thing. Totally. Yeah, totally. Yeah. What I, uh, my experience, 20 years, six months of doing the show and having people talk about the piano lesson experience. <laughs> so what, can I ask you about school? In, uh, were you in the marching band or the choir or shit like that? Yeah, well, um, once I, I started going to public school 11 or 12, and in high school I did, um, I did marching band. What did you play? <laughs> Drums. <laughs> oh, yeah. All right. Yeah. Just like, about every different percussion instrument in the marching band. You mean the bass drum? Bass drum. My favorite yes. is the tritom. <laughs> tritom is awesome. Tritoms, too, are pretty bitch. <laughs> yeah. So did then you learn traditional? Uh, did you play a field drum, like where you sling it on the side? Yeah. Yeah, it was real traditional. We had okay. terrible outfits we had to wear. <laughs> Big wool heavy. Yeah. Uh, purple and or, or purple and yellow with like these big feather plume hats. <laughs> well, it was probably the colors of the, the school, right? Yeah. Like yeah, ours yeah. was black and we were the pirates, Pedro pirates, and uh, oh, of course, it's the, already doing much better than us. We were the Trojans, which of course everyone makes fun of in high school because haha, it's like a condom or whatever. <laughs> but you're from USC, really uh, red and yellow, right? Yeah. Also, there's a USC over on the east uh, side. Uh, Gamecocks, University of South Carolina. <laughs> anyway, and I don't know what their color is. Maybe it's right, red, white, um, like Poland flag. Uh, uh, what about the first record you bought with your own money? Oh, my God. I'm going to embarrass myself. Um, it's a Watt for Pedro show. There's no hard questions. There's no wrong answers. Okay. 
short context, I had come out of this commune where I didn't even know what, like, Western music was. And so I'm dropped into junior high, like, age 11, and I'm trying to catch up as quickly as possible. And so I go with this little girl to the mall, and I just bought what she bought because I didn't know what the fuck was – or what the – can I swear? Yeah. I didn't I know do all the time. <laughs> okay. I didn't know what the fuck. My pop was a on. sailor. I'm like, it's safest to just buy whatever Molly buys. So I bought a cassette single of Color Me Bad. <laughs> I Want to Sex You Up by Col- Color Me Bad. Oh, remember yeah. That I song? remember that. <laughs> wow. And what was on the other and side? And then I took it home and was like mortified by what I heard. So mortified that I took it and like hid it. I hid it behind something in my room so no one would ever see it and know that I bought it. <laughs> And then my second thing I ever went and bought was a Nirvana album. So in that, I was like, okay, I'm sort of figuring it out here. I was wondering, what was on the other side of that cassette single? Oh, some B-side, I don't remember. Okay. I, I don't even think I really listened to that tape. Okay, okay. What yeah. about the first gig you saw? The first gig, um, my... Well, the first, like, live music anything... Uh, it was like my PE teacher was in a reggae band in Bolinas, and I went to see him at the community center to play. Uh, That's all right. He was also, he was also the school bus driver. But then my first gig gig. Yeah, but uh, that's got a lot of bass. Yeah, I'm into that <laughs> reggae. Yeah, no, but my first, like, I, uh, we're going to a big venue. I went to San Francisco and saw the specials play. Ah, there's some good bass yeah. in that band, too. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, you gave me a bunch of groupers, so I want to. Uh, well, first, we got this other trip, but I want to get into that later. Nivik or whatever. You're going to have to help me with that. But I want to play this Nightwalk. Watch for Pedro show. That chunk of music start out with Nivik, with Nightwalk. And then Trobakova Kuste Pesci, uh, former Yugoslavia, Slovenian part. Usta Yem Utami, which means I get up in the dark. Thank you for the translation, guys. Rapun off their new record, Iron Path. <laughs> Grouper. People that ain't, especially you cats in New Zealand, it's not Groper. <laughs> <laughs> With B Day song, birthday song, I just had one. It's number 64. Bombas Prandon, Happy Groover, to Jasper Johns, two from Viv, Coringham, Al Margolis, and then Puppet Midnight out of England with a license to confuse in the middle of the ocean, and finally, Grouper, parking lot. Now, you must have at some point got a hold of a guitar. Yes. After I had already released my first album, uh, I think I mostly picked it up because I was suddenly, I was getting asked, it went a little backwards. I put out music and then I started getting asked to play shows. So I. And you were I just a singer at first? What's that? You were just a singer at first? Yeah, I was just recording and. Um, privately and then I I put it out and um unexpectedly you know someone asked to put it out on vinyl kind of right away and I hadn't I still hadn't really played shows I was very very shy and so I was trying to figure out this other part of being a musician that most people know first I think usually before the recording um I was trying to figure that out and I I just started playing around with the guitar and and seeing about using that live and of course, you know, I had to do it my own way. So I s- just taught myself a way to play on it. And What'd you get? Like an acoustic guitar and just self-taught? Yeah, the guy I was seeing at the time had a a guitar that I kind of fell in love with. Really light strings. It's like a classical guitar. Yeah, nylon string. Seagull. Yeah, and um, that's the only one I played. And then. Actually, we we had like a breakup years later. He took the guitar, and it was like a crisis for me. <laughs> oh, fuck. I ended up buying this Martin that, no offense, I hated it. It just wasn't right for me. And so years later, I bump into my into Pete. We're still friends, and he says, "Oh, you know, I'm selling that guitar." And I was like, "I am fucking buying it." So now I have the original guitar again. Did you get rid of the Martin? What's that? Did you get yeah, rid of I the Martin? I did. <laughs> hey, it shows to go you, you know, right? <laughs> I mean, if it feels right when you're playing it, no matter what the yeah. fucking uh, brand, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah that, exactly. That's, that life yeah. will teach us lessons like that. Mm-hmm. Because we're so convinced, if I only get the right stuff, then I don't have to do the 
art <laughs> creation, yeah. composing, <laughs> right? It seems it was so fetish on gear. Not uh, yeah, you, you specifically, so. but as, as a, a species. Yeah, more and more so. I feel like there's a lot of performative stuff around, like... Oh, man, I go to a, some website like where they want to talk what about bass. There's a lot more, like, faith game going on and, like, how cool your gear is. And I hear a lot less talk about concept and the idea behind stuff. But I just sound like an old person talking now. <laughs> I don't think so. I think you're at more of a core issue because the gear, I mean... Somebody who's who's in a poverty situation, they got to use whatever they got. They can still fucking bring a great song. Totally. Yeah. Well, and that's part of my obsession with like New Zealand pop music. This whole scene happening like late eighties, nineties. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You're living there. You can't just order new fucking gear. You got to fix a weird old amp you have, and then you have an amp with a broken sound. And then you start playing with the distortion on that, and like making that part of the sound. That's beautiful. Um, that's beautiful. Liz, yeah. we're at the end of the first hour, December 27, 2021, Dish Wap Pedro Show. Special guest, Liz Harris. Hold tight for hour two. Watch for Pedro Show. Start out the second hour with Grouper. Unclean Mind. Then the Ratchet Orchestra out of Montreal with Dusty. Something live for them. Grouper again with Pale Interior. Is there another kind? <laughs> yes, of course there is. Uh, Pato <laughs> Hideki. <laughs> I know, I'm having a conversation with him. Uh, off his new album, A Tale of Snake, and then Grouper again with Alien Observer. Liz, hip us to Grouper. Where, where's that in the timeline? What, what's that? In, your, in the arc of your music journey, where's Grouper? Oh. It, that is a good question. Because I did, I feel like I was very musical beforehand, but nothing that was expressed to anyone. You know, I sang a lot of songs to myself. Um, like your pop. Never, yeah, I never, it never occurred to me to remember them or record them. I, I did a lot of just singing to myself when I was alone. Um, and I carried around a Wurlitzer and a four-track tape recorder for a long time. Um, and then when I was, you know, I was living in L.A. I, I was even a drummer in some bands, some kind of like dream pop girl bands. Wh uh, where did you learn drums? Um, marching band. Oh, that's right? right. That's right. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, not, I'm forgetting track <laughs> kit. Did, you know what I did actually yeah, take me. lessons, like kit drum lessons for you know, of course, again, only like two months before I quit. But yeah, at least they gave uh, you the foundation. Yeah, totally. And I can still sort of read drum music. Um, but yeah, I, I was living in LA and after college and a little bit loss and um I, I left and felt like uh this kind of rebirth redevotion to what the hell I was doing and decided that I was only going to work on music and art and got really intense about it um I think I even cut all my hair off around the same time and so I did <laughs> I that a couple times <laughs> what's that I did that a couple of times, me and D yeah. Boone's idea. Yeah, like, we thought it would help us on a summer all tour. Fancy clothes I had in LA and like cut all my hair off, moved to Oakland, and was um I really did only work on music and art, and I started doing a uh, kind of of drawing that I still do sort of overnight right then, and also started making the grouper music. I really I have to say a lot of it had to do with the people I was around because I was around a lot of people putting on shows uh, in the noise scene and so there were there were lots of just funny um pedals and chords and friends doing circuit bending and stuff around me and I was going to shows all the time so that was like a pretty fertile environment Bay Area so d did you know the uh Brutal Sound Effects crew Brutal Sound Effects Yeah mm -hmm. it, it had some people from Rainbow Carolina Okay, yeah, no, I know Grux, Grux did Ah, uh, yeah, but you're not supposed to say his name. You're not supposed to say his name. He asked me not to say his name okay. on the air. Okay. He says he wants to be known as the Brutal I Sound Effects it. Group. I didn't say not his name. And, yeah. J and Jake Rodriguez told me that that scene was called the Costume Noise Scene. Yeah, that was, and that was a little bit like the generation we were all inspired by. And then we came a little later, and... Sometimes there were costumes, but uh, def definitely a lot of interesting art went along with that scene. But, um, yeah, uh, just a lot of people playing with, like, early – it's the fourth synth 
since really took off. People yeah. had since they definitely built them all themselves. They weren't buying modules and stuff. Right. Um, and yeah, a lot of dis- distorted sounds. Um, a lot of shit all mixed up together. And so I was taking those ideas home and and just playing on this Wurlitzer I had um, and and trying to figure out my four track recorder. And Grouper and, came out of that. Yeah, it really did. It just walked. It, Came in very quickly. Now, it's trippy. The name sounds like, I know it's the name of a fish, but it also sounds like a band, a group. But it was it was yeah. woman alone, right? Yeah. Well, to, in my head, that's more, that's what I think of before I think of a fish. It's just that it's a group. Because I was trying to think of how to take, I didn't want to just use my own name. And um, so I was like trying to think of the simplest version to describe what I was doing. And I was like, well, I'm just a grouper. I'm just grouping sounds together. That's all I'm doing. Um, <laughs> trying to, yeah. No, I think it's oh, great. I, I'm way into it. I, I think sometimes yeah. the things that are just self-evident are the most elegant trips. <laughs> yeah, and it leaves it wide open, right? Cause right, it that's why I mean. Different things. Yeah. It's almost I like a blank just, slate, an easel, you know? Just, I was, like, mildly dismayed when I realized it was a fish name later. <laughs> and speaking of water, I want to play Water People. Watch from Pedro Show. That chunk of music star out the grouper doing Water People. Then Mike Adams and at his honest weight. That's a band name, huh? Mike Adams at his honest weight. <laughs> <laughs> I just love it. And grouper after that again with Disordered Minds. Not suspicious minds, this is all this prelacy people. <laughs> Ray Shin after that with damage controls, and then finally Grouper with Claren. So, can you te- can you remember the first Grouper gig? Oh yes, very well because it. Was <laughs> My friends asked me to play at this warehouse show, and I was just like mortified. <laughs> In the end, I get there, and I see that they have a little green room to the side of the stage. And I said, hey, do you think I could just play in here, and you can pipe it out into the room? <laughs> and and they were like, yeah, I mean, fuck it, sure. <laughs> and so I did, I did that, and I was so relieved. And yeah, I got to, like, avoid feeling shy or on the spot. And I came out, and everyone was like, when are you starting? <laughs> I just played. They're like, oh, we thought that was like a DJ. <laughs> I got to tell you, I had a similar experience. Mary Pettibone took me to go see Farrell Sanders, who was living in the Bay Area at the time, but was up in Hollywood at Catalina on Cahuenga. And I guess he's playing with these young guys, and I guess the band was so bad, there's a little room on the side. He went in there and did the rest of the gig. Oh, yeah. (laughs) So it was a parallel universe to yours there, Liz. Okay. Okay. So you know that four track you said you brought with the Wolitzer? I mean, how big yeah. was the Wurlitzer? <laughs> kind of small. How'd you bring get it around? Oh, it was like one of the Wurlitzer key keyboards, two hundred A, I think they're called. Oh, so, okay. So it's a smaller heavy, thing. You can okay. you can lug them around. They are heavy. I'm thinking um, about more like the Hammond. You know, they had these things oh, you put in churches that. in your house and shit, right? Right, right. Yeah. Okay. No, it wasn't their big stand-up organ. No. Okay. Okay. So the four track. Were, yeah. you, were you kind of experiment like because you said you were influenced by these uh, uh, costume noise? There. Were you using the four track as like kind of an instrument, or was it just to Yay. record your performances? Ultimately, I mean, I don't think I was too self aware at all when I was starting. I just kind of like started playing stuff and whatever came out. But the the the, the task cam I had is notorious for bleeding tracks. Right. So I kind of I kind of had to right away incorporate the idea of just like working with what was already happening and trying to fold in like stuff that could be a mistake. I definitely knew I couldn't try for a clean sound. I wasn't really interested in that. So there's, there's funny things like ghosts of other sounds, uh, other recordings yeah. on some of the tracks. And um, sometimes you only had one pass cause you weren't going to be able to erase that track because of <laughs> the thing being broken. Right. Right. Yeah. And, and like, you're not making demos. This is the real dealio, right? Yeah. But I didn't, I didn't have any idea of where it was going to go. You know, the, the way it ended up getting released, that person I was seeing at the time just gave it to a friend of theirs without asking me, uh, <laughs> which sounds so offensive. Sort of, to, but It I happened to Don Bowles, you know, nothing if, would have ever happened. If, I thought what I was making was just like, 
whatever, who would want to hear it? But. It happened to Don Bowles, the drummer, one of the last drummer of the Germs. He was in a band called Vox Pop, and he, there's a picture of him naked with a cape on and shit. Some dude used that for the album cover without telling him. <laughs> <laughs> I think I saw that guy play drums at a party. Okay. You know, he played for a long time with that three-day stubble band. So. Yeah. He's uh, with uh, fancy space p- people. Uh, incredible cat. He's a great grandfather. Oh, wow. Well. <laughs> See, punk rockers awesome. don't all die. <laughs> <laughs> they don't all die. So, uh, okay, so, like, you know, people try to get the records released, and you're, it happens to you without you even being involved. Yeah, uh, which have felt embarrassed isn't the right word, but I feel funny sometimes talking about it. I think it adds to sort of an imposter complex. Like, I, <laughs> no, no, I feel no. Guilt. And then, you know, friends of mine who really love performing and they're living to try to, like, get gigs and play shows, I feel bad about that, too, because I'm like, oh, that's my least favorite. Liz, part, I've worried about <laughs> that for years, that, like, there's no yeah. fucking justice. The people don't even try. They win the lottery, and the other cats who try hard, they can't get anything. Yeah. It's fucked up. Look, we're at the end of the second hour. December 27, 2021, just what Peter says, special guest Liz Harris. Hold time for hour three. <laughs> Started off third hour with Grouper and Headache, and then Miriam Gendron out of uh, Canada with Wally Wally. Grouper again, made of air. Tell me how you put together Grouper. So, uh, like you say, when you record, you don't make demos. So, uh, Mm-mm. what did you keep a little book of words? Do you, uh, Use voice memo and a leash? Or? Oh, well, it's, at this point, there's been a lot of different phases. When I started, I wasn't a computer or a phone person. Um, I was probably the last person to get a smartphone. But um, Watch still don't have one. I have those Star Trek uh, hell know, yeah. communicator okay. things. <laughs> no, yeah. I like email and shit, but I only want to use it on a computer. I, can't, I won't be able to get anything done. <laughs> exactly, yeah. Yeah, no, and That's I finally why I call the leash. Smart, <laughs> I finally was forced to get a smartphone. I've watched myself devolve into the same addiction that most people have with that. But yeah, and um, they ain't just nerds, you know. I, I see the, the yeah. garbage man while he's waiting for the thing to be dumped. He's looking at his whatever. Yeah, yeah. Honestly, I think it's troubling, but that's we could <laughs> talk a lot about no. that. Yeah, um, I'm, 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 I'm curious about how uh, you've evolved right now. How are you making songs? I, I, so when I started, I would just kind of play and songs would come out. I would often do them in one pass. I didn't, I didn't have a lot of self-awareness or worrying about it. And I really trusted the first takes. I found if I tried to like work at it and do it again, like I just started muddying it. Um, These days, my process has changed a lot. I take big breaks from playing music. Um. Because there's, I spent so many years just doing it constantly and every day. It started making me a little nuts. Um, and uh, so I do use voice notes. Um, I still do a lot of recording on my own or at home. But I do have a friend I um, trust and like working with, my friend Justin. And I've, I'll have sometimes go and record at his place. He lives in Oregon also, and he recorded uh, the band I play in with my friends. It's called Helen. He did that whole album. He has a bunch of analog gear, and he's like a neurotic art- artist himself, so we work well together. <laughs> you didn't send me any Helen, so I don't know what it's like. Oh, okay. I'll shoot. I'll send you some. Okay. Um, but uh, yeah. And, what, and how do you how do how do you uh, how, how do you compare that woman alone? The grouper lady now is in a group. It, the the uh, difference in the dynamic. Um, yeah, I love that question because they are really different. I thought forever I was just shy about all music, but then I started doing Helen and realized, oh, no, I'm just shy about the grouper stuff because it's such sensitive material. Yeah. Helen is like fun pop music, and I, I'm, I'm fine talking about it. I can, And I'm playing shows is kind of fun, you know? So um, it's, it takes the pressure off in some ways, but... Um, I, I did definitely have a thought in the middle of our recording and releasing process because we put the vinyl out ourselves. Just, um, actually, you know, Cranky did a version as well. Um, but I had a thought of like, oh, wow, I've been like so lucky all these years not to have to deal with a, a band. <laughs> you mean the, po- the, the people politics. 
Yeah, and I it, and Scott and Jed and I like I think in terms of like band politics we get along well, but I just am not used to have to dealing with anyone disagreeing about anything, and I realize that I do much better when I get to make all the decisions. But you said you kind of <laughs> like it though. I did. I did like it because well, well, or maybe the often. idea of taking turns, so you don't have to yeah. always be one way all the time. It doesn't. Yeah, yeah, but um. You just have to talk about stuff like, oh, well, who wrote this song? We just ended up splitting everything three ways because it felt so complicated to, to get into the politics otherwise. And, you know, there's always one person who is doing most of the organizing, so then people get sore feelings about that, and blah, blah. I just, I love that I'm so lucky I don't have to deal with that normally. Well, yes, yeah, grouper, right? Woman alone, of course, of course. Yeah, the, the yeah. woman alone. Yeah, but the I think I have to do stuff like that is when I work with labels. That's when I have to like allow other people in and let them make some of the calls, and that's always the hardest part for me. I guess I'm pretty controlling. Or, uh, <laughs> or, or protective. Protect, yeah. Well, in a protective, big way, maybe. You know, <laughs> you know, as soon as somebody's out there, it's completely out of your hands. So you right, want right. to do as good a job you can getting it to that point. Okay. No matter what, how good a job you do, something Here, will be altered. Thing. Something will be different, you know. So. Absolute. Here's something that I say for the end that you gave me, Nevik. Oh yeah. Something called Cloud Mouth. <laughs> I love this title. Oh cool. <laughs> let, let me play. Walk for Pedro Show last music for this edition. Nevik with Cloud Mouth. And then we had excerpts from a performance at the Center to Art Central Pla. Contemporary. Sorry, <laughs> French people. Today, uh, Chalet Ver, Exposition of Deep in the Woods from Pierre Violin, live November 2021, the Hi-Fi Club for Air Regis. And uh, pardon for the destruction of your language, I didn't mean it on purpose. And then finally, not uh, Nivik with Crying Jar. In lightness to Nivik. Hmm? Oh, in light. Sorry, I heard you wrong. I'm getting hard of hearing. Um, uh, Nivek was, was a, just kind of a lot of my ideas just kind of arrive almost like opening your inbox or something. Although I hate to compare it to email. <laughs> Hopefully more poetic than that. But I was have, I was working on a film with the sounds for a film with my friend Paul. And I started having dreams that were like messages that were like flashing lines of text. And I had one that had the name Nivek. The full name was Anya Nivek. It looked like this Slavic name. Yeah, Anya, Slav. I had, dream, right. I had a dream that went with it that I was in the Arctic and learning some kind of ritual from these women out in the snow. And I was like, wow, that was odd. And then very shortly after that, a friend of mine uh, in Poland, who I've worked with a bunch got in touch and said, hey, we're doing a residency in the Arctic in Russia, and we want you to do it. Do you want to? And I said, absolutely. I just had this... A premonition. Said, yeah. I was like, oh, it's absolutely supposed to happen, yes. Yeah. So I went up to Murmansk. Murmansk. Uh, wow, yeah. that's way up yeah. there. Yeah. It didn't end up happening for a few years. By the time we were able to organize it around tours and other crap, um, it was a couple of years later, but that was a good thing because in the meantime, I started writing some of the music. So what I did there was a lot of like intense mixing and some recording. Um, that's kind of where it all came together when I was doing this residency in Murmansk. And then, um, yeah, I did a couple live performances for the group that had sponsored the residency. They do a festival called Unsound in Poland, in Krakow. Um, Krakow, yeah, I played there Yeah, and in other various locations. They've really spread out. I think they're doing something in Australia now as well. But um, And I worked with a, a person who did some um, visuals, Marcel Weber. Uh, and But ultimately, and I made this clear with the group before we did these performances. I knew that it was going to exist on its own as a recording, and so I did I did that on my own label af afterwards. And, yeah. But it, much, it, much, it, much different than Grouper, because it was anchored in this uh, other ex experience yeah, of the country, much, other location. Yeah. Much different. I feel like the music came from a really different place. It was... I was feeling really affected, or it felt automatically affected. I wasn't trying to channel it into this. It just became something about what was happening in the world, like a lot of turmoil 
um, a lot of poisonous stuff that was happening. I think I needed to have a place to um, express some darker feelings. Uh, not that group person dark, but it was, yeah, it was a very specific response more to the world, whereas I think grouper is a bit more internal. Um, and this is about something heavy I saw that was happening in, in, in the world more so. And, and also just coming from that dream place that I mentioned. So, sure, sure. and who knows the origin of that? So, well, the inside meets the outside. What, what, mm-hmm. what, where can people find you on the internet? Um, Nivek or all of it. So uh, what, what's the URL? Uh, are you saying where can people find Nivek or just no? All of uh, just Liz Harris oh. music. Uh, Grouper dot bandcamp dot com. That's okay. the best place. And people, and I have, if you don't know the fish Nivek name, Bear it's G R O U P E R dot yeah. bandcamp dot. Com. Okay. Yeah. But Jake Grope. <laughs> <laughs> Groper. Okay. And what? And Liz, <laughs> what's your next plan? My next plan, um, I have a project called Raum, R-A-U-M, um, with my friend Jeffrey Cantu Ledesma, and that should I should be getting records hopefully sometime in January or in winter, and we'll put that out on my label. Um, and maybe, maybe this tour in spring is really going to happen. We have to see what's happening with COVID. So I'm, I'm trying to remember how to play music live again. <laughs> <laughs> right, but the next it's been so long. So. so it's really not next. You've got this ROM thing done. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I've, the test pressings were approved, approved a few months ago. And, and I how's, how's it different than group, uh, group, Grouper? Yeah. Yeah. How's it different? Um, ambient, almost entirely. Oh. Um, so there's a lot of tape and looping and field recordings. Yeah. And really more subtle compositions. We spent years on it. I'm pretty proud of it. I'm excited to put it out, but it's it's also just a very well. You didn't give me any, so can I at least get some so I can pull Sorry. it? Sorry. <laughs> yes, I'll send you all of this. Stuff. Thank you so much. <laughs> and and it's a big honor to have you on the show, Liz. Truly. Thanks for having me. And when you have yeah. time again after your tour, please come back. Okay. Great. Okay. Thanks. People, it's been December 27, 2021, and Dishwap Pedro Shukib, you powder.